One of the hardest decisions when buying a new Mac is how many CPU cores do I need? Should I even upgrade my RAM? And is the expensive Apple SSD upgrades actually worth the money? Now, some people like to paint the picture of Apple as being money hungry and predatory in some of their ways. Could it be that being one of the most successful tech businesses just comes with that narrative or are some of their practices questionable? Maybe but that's not the focus. And with that being said, there's a clear upsell ladder in the Mac buying process, and this video is gonna help you avoid any unnecessary spending. I've been using MacBooks and Apple computers well over 13 years, and I used to be the Windows only guy. So why did I switch? Before we even go there, let me give you clear clarity, avoiding some of the most common mistakes made when purchasing new Macs by new customers, and even current customers. Also, should you future-proof your machine? A lot of mistakes can be made here, but there's nothing wrong with giving your machine the proper headroom it needs to breathe. Again, proper headroom. Let's start with how many CPU cores do I need? To get straight to the point with these new M1, M2, M3 chips and so on, if you're doing basic typical laptop tasks, word processing, web browsing, content consumption, and maybe the occasional photo edit and light video editing here and there, well then any of these chipsets in their base format, which means their cheapest and lowest capacity can handle those tasks for you without a doubt. So when do you need more CPU cores or a higher end chip such as the M Pro or M Max? Now when crossing the threshold into a pro machine territory, these higher end chips also have higher GPUs. So if you're doing more graphical intensive tasks, such as heavier video editing, photo editing, motion graphics, music productions, programming, etc., that usually always will bring you into the M Pro and M Max territory. But when you start shopping these chips, there's way more CPU and GPU core options. And this is where the confusion starts. Let me ask you this. What machine are you using now? What is its configuration? You should be able to go into system settings and about and find your CPU and GPU components because the most important thing in this decision is a reference point. So is that current machine not enough as is? Then you would know that you at least need more CPU cores and GPU cores than that machine has essentially. But if you're coming from an Intel based machine, it may not be as simple as that because this new Apple Silicon chip design runs more powerful and more efficient at even the same cores. But at least you have a reference point. Now, hold that thought. Let's talk about what is the most important upgrade to consider how much RAM do you need? This deserves its own dedicated video and I'll make one, but let's summarize it here. You will more than likely max out your RAM way before you ever exceed your CPU power. And when you max out your RAM on these machines, they revert to swap memory, which essentially designates a portion of your internal SSD to act as RAM. Now, RAM is a very volatile memory, which is exactly why it has its own dedicated hardware. RAM is all about temporary usage and is wiped clean and rewritten to all of the time. Now, when you max out RAM and go into swap memory, you're doing the same write and rewrite action to your SSD, which isn't really made for that. You also have a TBW rating with all SSDs, which is the amount of total bytes written or terabytes written before the SSD sees failure. So for example, if your one terabyte SSD has a TBW of 300, it would equate to about 164 gigabytes of data writes per day within the warranty period, which is actually pretty high. And SSDs of today have reached a higher threshold for durability. So that leaves the question, does swap memory kill SSDs? In theory, yes, but it's not enough to put a true dent in the SSDs TBW. Now, if you research this online, you'll find mixed results and theories, but no hard evidence of this anywhere. At least it's way too early in the M chip cycle of SSDs to know. Let's sum this up. Remember those basic users I said would be fine with basic chips? They are the ones who can go with 8 gigabytes of RAM mostly and be fine, as long as they manage the amount of those Chrome tabs. <laughs> but also remember the users I said fall into the M Pro chip category should start with no less than 16 gigabytes of RAM. And Apple knows this, which is why all M Pro chip configurations start with a minimum of 16 gigabytes or 18 gigabytes of RAM. And when you put that in perspective, Apple did right by that configuration and there's nothing predatory about that. See, the real Pro chips start 
at the M Pro, which is why any base M chip MacBook Pro is not a true Pro machine, but more of an access to Pro external hardware designs. And most users who need more than 16 or 18 gigabytes of RAM typically have a reason or a reference point for expanding their RAM beyond that starting point. If you don't have a solid reference point as to why you're upgrading or configuring your machine in a certain way, then how could you actually know what to configure? Now let's get into the most controversial topic when configuring figuring a new Mac and that's SSD storage prices and upgrades. Most content creators are going to tell you to save money and get cheaper external storage. In many cases, I could agree, but what they don't tell you is that solution removes convenience, especially for MacBook owners. And these solutions are not as fast as internal storage, but that doesn't mean that they're not useful and cost effective. And as I stated above, in many cases, this is the way to go. Also, an external SSD source means another cable and item to carry and track while on the move. But if your Mac is stationary, then this is a no brainer and it is the solution for most. And there's a ton of options and maybe I'll make a video on all of the options I've tried and explored, some good, some bad, and that could help you a ton. So yes, it is cheaper. But as someone who tends to do video editing and work on important projects on the go, I found that the inconvenience of carry placement and the reality that it could be lost made for some regrets. For me personally, I regret a one terabyte internal SSD because I've had projects that have been larger than one terabyte. Also, at just one terabyte, I can only do so many video projects before I have to offload my hard drive in order to free up space. Now, if you didn't know, running your internal storage at almost full capacity consistently is terrible for the disc health and performance. So for me, in this predicament, a larger internal SSD makes more sense for me. But at what cost? Apple charges big bank for the SSD upgrades, and that's what causes the controversy. I will say the Apple's internal SSD speeds are very impressive and hard to match by external drives, but they're not necessary for most. So if the goal is to be cost effective, just make sure that the size of what's a guaranteed keep on your internal storage will not exceed your internal SSD and allow the headroom necessary for disc health and performance. So if the collective of my app installs, music library, and non-negotiable storage all equal 450 plus gigabytes, then a 512 gigabyte internal is not ideal for me and a one terabyte should be considered. And expanding to external cheaper storage to help maintain that headroom is ideal. Just remember, once you pick an amount in any of these categories, that's it. That's your build. And as is, it's not upgradable. And that's what makes the buying process complicated and uneasy for some. And let's be real. A mistake made here leads to a lot more money spent down the road. I saw a creator arguing against future proof and saying that people might over upgrade and never use it which is a possible, but keep this in mind. In this instance, I'd rather have more than I need rather than not enough when I need it because not having enough in my machine means I need to get rid of what I have, take a loss and spend even more for the machine I should have gotten. Ooh. You technology snobs, technology snobs. I didn't just about had it with all of y'all. Listen, <laughs> duck. No watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. No watch, no diamonds, no watch, good timing, yeah. Need no middleman, I'm the man of man, send it in. I like what I like, me, I know my rights, it's sipping in. I like having fun, I do what I want, it's what it is. For my son and son, for my daughters, yeah, it's for my twin. I work through the night.